Good morning. I'm Louisa Stam, the Chief Medical Officer at Assembly Biosciences, and I'm pleased to take part in this year's international workshop on HBV Cure. I'd like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to speak to you today about core inhibitors or capsid assembly modulators. These are my disclosures. I'm an employee and stockholder of Assembly. Core inhibitors have demonstrated potent antiviral activity, targeting multiple steps of the HBV replication life cycle. As shown in step one, they block pgRNA encapsidation and subsequent DNA replication and release of RNA containing particles as well as infectious virions. In addition, core inhibitors have been shown in vitro to have an effect on CCC DNA. As shown in step two, following entry, they block capsid disassembly and CCC DNA formation. And as shown in step three, they block CCC DNA amplification in an already infected cell. First generation core inhibitors are more active against step one than steps two and three. However, potent activity against both replication and CCC DNA formation are essential for optimal clinical response. With this in mind, next generation core inhibitors are in development with improved pharmacology and potency against viral replication and CCC DNA formation and maintenance. Development of core inhibitors is a competitive area of development with many agents being assessed clinically as components of curative regimens for chronic hepatitis B. Here I'm showing an overview of select clinical stage core inhibitors according to phase, which I have summarized based on publicly available information. Many of the candidates in phase one shown here may be considered next generation with increased in vitro potency, specifically against CCC DNA formation. There are several core inhibitors in phase two development in combinations with NRTIs and other complementary mechanisms of action. Presently, it's estimated that about three-fourths of ongoing HBV cure combination studies include a core inhibitor component. I'll now switch gears and specifically speak to Assembly's core inhibitor portfolio, starting with Vebicorvir, a first-generation core inhibitor. Similar to other core inhibitors, it, it disrupts capsid by allosteric binding, which results in misassembly and destabilization of nucleocapsids. It demonstrated activity against all HBV genotypes tested and is also active against NRTI resistant HBV. It is administered orally once daily at a dose of 300 milligrams and has a 24 hour elimination half life in patients and no drug interaction with NRTIs. Importantly, Vebicorvir has demonstrated a favorable safety and tolerability profile in 95 patients treated for up to one and a half years. In phase two studies and across patient populations, the addition of Vebicorvir to NRTI results in greater viral suppression than NRTI alone. In the treatment naive e antigen positive patients, Vebicorvir plus Entecavir shown in purple led to statistically lower levels of HPV DNA and pgRNA compared to Entecavir alone shown in gray after 24 hours, 24 weeks of dosing. Greater viral suppression was also observed in virologically suppressed E antigen positive patients using assemblies more sensitive in house HBV nucleic acid assays. Compared to patients on placebo plus NRTI, here shown in gray, there are higher proportions of patients on Vebicorvir plus NRTI, shown in blue, achieving HBV DNA target not detected and HBV pgRNA less than the lower limit of quantification after 24 weeks of dosing. Despite the deeper suppression afforded by the addition of Corvier to standard of care therapy, the first generation core inhibitor and NRTI alone were not enough, enough rather, to lead to significant change in viral antigens or a durable off-treatment response, as shown by the virologic relapse following discontinuation of treatment with Vebicorvir and NRTI. In the phase two study, virologically suppressed patients who met treatment stopping criteria after a year or year and a half of treatment with Vebicorvir and NRTI were either E antigen negative or had E antigen levels 
less than five for at least six months, all experienced virologic relapse. In a post, a post hoc analysis shown here on this slide within each group, we identified two categories of patients with off treatment viral loads, which were lower shown in green or higher shown in purple. This allowed us to do a univariate analysis for factors associated with treatment response. This identified entecavir use and lower correlated antigen levels at the end of treatment as being associated with lower viral loads off treatment in the e antigen negative patients and younger age in the e antigen positive patients. These factors have also been identified in other stop loop studies. Based on the established antiviral efficacy and fa favorable safety profile, we're progressing vebicorvir in multi-drug combinations with complementary mechanisms of action. We have initiated a 48-week three-drug combination study with vebicorvir, NRTI, and our butuses RNAi AB729, and also have another study evaluating vebicorvir with N R NRTI and pegylated interferon in China. We're currently planning a shorter duration exploratory study with Antios's A-spin molecule, ATI2173, which is scheduled to start in the first half of next year. In these studies, we'll be evaluating the three drug versus two drug combinations, first on treatment and subsequently off treatment as applicable. Compared to Vebicorvir, the next generation core inhibitors, 3733, and 4334 have structurally distinct chemical scaffolds and demonstrate higher in vitro potency against HBV DNA and also against CCC DNA formation as shown in the EC50s on this slide. Importantly though, the clinical efficacy of antivirals depends not only on the intrinsic potency, but also on protein binding and drug exposure. In this regard, 3733 and 4334 are projected to be substantially improved compared to Vebicorvir, as shown by the CMIN over protein-adjusted EC50s. Specifically, the recently nominated agent, 4334, is over 200-fold more active for inhibition of CCC DNA formation compared to Vebicorvir. In conclusion, here are the key components of Assembly's HBV strategy focused on core inhibition. Firstly, we are developing more potent next generation core inhibitors. 3733 has just completed a phase 1A study, which will be presented at ASLD this year, and will start in a phase 1B study in 2022. We're currently focused on IND enabling studies for 4334, and will start in a phase 1A study next year. Secondly, and in parallel, we're moving forward with Vebicorvir and three drug combination studies to inform not only Vebicorvir development, but also regimens for the next generation core inhibitors. And lastly, we're expanding our research projects to internally develop candidates with novel targets, which will be complementary to core inhibitors. The first of these programs is evaluate, evaluating core protein CCC DNA disruption in a collaboration with Dora Pharma. Thank you very much for your attention and I look forward to your questions.